Units fall to 2015 prices. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from realestate.com.au. It's originally from the Herald Sun, but before we look at this, because it's, it's discussing Melbourne suburbs where units are cheaper than at 2015, let's jump over to the property data room so we get an appreciation of what the median price is. Now I know this is based on CoreLogic data, but still this is you know, property property law to the agents. This data is from 31st of March, 2020. The average unit price in Melbourne was 575. The weighted average is 575,493, that extra 493 bucks. Sydney's at 700,000 for a unit. Well, there you go. So we were talking about Melbourne. Now, another thing to remember, another thing to remember is that, you know, just, you know, 2015 was just the beginning when we started to see all in the middle of this climb up in number of building approvals for foreign investors. We started seeing a huge increase, huge increase in foreign investment in our property here in Australia. Okay, so we're coming back down. And also I'll bring up this chart here, just showing property prices. So we can see here, Melbourne is the blue line at the top. If it's going back to 2015, it's been a bit of a move, everyone. A bit of a move. Look at Darwin, it's taken a hit since then. So let's jump back here. With that in mind, let's have a look at this. And, you know, I mean, would you want to jump? Jump on a unit. You know, flammable cladding and foam included. Units in some of Melbourne's blue chip suburbs are cheaper than they were five years ago but experts warn they may not be the bargain they seem carlton's median unit price fell 24.4 percent to 340 grand in the five years to may 31 according to realestate.com.au data other perfor poor performers were turak and armadale where the average unit price dropped to 20.8 to a value of 950 grand and 660. So Melbourne, remember the average is 575. So Carlton is below. Turak is well above. Well, it's Turak. It's, you know, a posh suburb. And as well, Armadale is above. So we can see here, you know. So the inner ring dominated the worst performing suburbs with Abbotsford, North Melbourne, and Travancore also recording falls of more than 10%. But doesn't property always go up, everyone? Doesn't property always go up? Someone sent me a, a Facebook ad from a, you know, a property genius who said, you know, you can borrow money so cheap and then you can buy a, a townhouse in Brisbane and rent it out at 500 a week. That's a 1.5% spread. Everyone should do it. You can't borrow enough money to do it. Now, what that shows me is no, uh, no appreciate. I mean, it's a Facebook ad. So you want to sucker people in. You want to make them think it's easy to do all this. It's bloody hard. But, it, you know, there's risks involved. And we're starting to see that manifest with people leaving rental properties, moving back home. In contrast, Trad Chadston's median unit value jumped. The highest across Victoria soaring 70% to 818,000 over the period. Only a 7% only a climb in five years. You know, that, that's normal for property, isn't it? Isn't it? Realestate.com.au's chief economist, Nerida Knisby, said a shift towards lower quality units to cater for students was evident in the data. Somewhere like Carlton would partly be driven by the fact there's so much development but also, there's a lot of cheaper apartments aimed at students, she said. You've got this shift in product type from better quality apartments to more mass-produced ones. Ms. Knisby said the return of regional and international students coupled with a decline in new projects could ease the downward pressure on prices. Are we going to get the return of international students? I'm sure the universities have enough political power to bring over their cash cows. I'm sure they have. To, you know, forget about you know border closures and health issues. No, that's not important. We need to be making our uni fees. We need to fill up these these properties. 
Think of the poor investors, everyone. Think of the poor investors. Development pipelines for apartments are incredibly low over the next seven, uh, next 12 to 18 months. Demand is low, but upcoming supply is low too. Yes, but how long will demand remain low? Which will bl- remain lower for longer? You know, student accommodation, I mean, there you go. I mean, these, these aren't... Well, these aren't quality builds, are they, everyone? If, if you've ever been in them, they're like little tiny shoebox apartments. As an investment, sure, you get the, the revenue from the student, but there's also a lot of high-body corporate fees because there's all these extra amenities because you can't spend time in your little shoebox. You need gyms and other rooms and other facilities for the people to use. It, it does, is it just me or does it feel like we're returning to 19th century you know, tiny little apartments? Soon you get families living in these things. Entire families. Do you think we'll see that? Propertology, head of research, Simon Presley, said abysmal quality control and oversupply of similar product meant units around inner Melbourne remained poor price performers. Well, yeah, you're not, you're competing with everyone else here if you're buying in these things. There's nothing special about them. How many of these, you know, even in Brisbane, you know, 300 apartments in one one complex where they're giving you they're giving you paying you a year of the mortgage that just screams desperation i mean brilliant brilliant from a marketing perspective turning a discount into you know an opportunity and something they can proudly put forward quite quite smart i'm impressed from that perspective i wouldn't touch it if you gave one to me mr presley said of inner city apartments in a nutshell, well, yeah, I mean, think about it. There's a cost associated with maintaining this. You take on all the body corporate costs. You take on the risks of any construction defects manifesting. And they can appear years later. We're seeing this now. I'll have to look at this. You know, articles about Opal now. They're suing the government for 500 additional defects they found. And it's quite a unique situation there. I'll have to do a video on it later today. It's a unique situation there because the government, by owning the land, is considered a developer. It's, it's a little, a little, There's a few issues there that add complexity to it. So you don't blame them for going to the government. That's, they can see the biggest cash cow there. So in a nutshell, inner city and high rise apartments are bloody horrible investments. Structural issues needing substantial repair, create bills for owners of high rise apartments and put off prospective buyers, he had. New doesn't mean better, he said. If anything, if it's built in the last 20 years, all the more reason to be concerned about it. Wow, it's it's, it's it's good to hear this from someone in the property sector. Compounding the pro- those price woes, the CBD vacancy rate last month skyrocketed to a 15-year high of 9.3%, according to SQM Research. Mr. Presley said the high vacancy rate was indicative of the real high volume of gullible investors who didn't do the research or didn't listen to the warnings. What, what research? Pro- property always goes up, doesn't it? Property, always, it never goes down. You know, rent, rent, mo- rent, money's dead, money, property goes up, negative gear. Don't buy one student accommodation apartment, guys. Buy six, six of them. Just think how much money you can save. Just like that teacher, remember him? He was worried. He was worried he was going to lose, lose all his savings. Because the only way to get ahead is to buy six properties, pay no capital, and just negative gear them to, to reduce your tax. How many people do you think have bought multiple of these things? Collings North Coat director Christian Gravis said high vacancy rates in the inner city had also seen rental prices plummet during the economic lockdown. It's literally a race to the bottom, he said. The cheapest ones are the only ones that are getting rented. There you go. So let's have a look at the falls. We're seeing 24% in Carlton. Turak down 20%, Armadale 15 Abbotsford down 13 North Melbourne down 11.6%, uh, Travancore down 11.4%, Boleyn down 10.3%, Parkville 7.2%, Trag- Tragalong 67 Windsor 55 Preyron Prairie- 5%. I'm sure I butchered all of those names. There you go, everyone. So, do you think property always goes up? Would you be jumping to get into one of these? Or are you put off from even looking at any of these multi-res apartments? Or would you get something older? An old bricky from the 80s? Maybe. Probably get bigger bigger rooms as well. 
Maybe some solid walls too. Probably pay for it as well, to be honest. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Do you think we'll see greater corrections in the unit sector? Or does property always go up? As always, if you're a fan of the channel and want to support us a little bit extra, there are a few ways you can. Simply interacting, commenting, sharing the videos helps the channel grow. Beats the YouTube algorithm. You can also support us financially via joining the channel on YouTube or Patreon, using our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin, buying our merch from Heiser Says. You can see Rachel's pocket squares behind me, using PayPal or Gold Pass from the Perth Mint. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.